So this is Arnos Vale Cemetery in Bristol here in the United Kingdom and it's a Victorian style cemetery and I believe from reading online it's 45 acres in size. We have a beautiful gravesite here. This person looks like he was well known. And some man here in his football gear. And you call it in America soccer. And it's in loving memory of James Charles Alfred Sanders, who was born on the 15th of October, 1932, and died on the 20th of May, 2007. Bristol showman and professional footballer who played for Bristol City, Crystal Palace, Rochdale and Exeter City also. Isn't that just a beautiful statue? And the likeness of James Charles Alfred. And you see the football there. Association football is the most popular outdoor sport in Britain. Thousands play and millions watch the game. Keenest of all are the youngsters, whose heroes are the famous professional footballers, and who dream of the day when they too perhaps may wear the colours of a famous club and hear the roar of the crowd. Really, really stunning statue. And just down the bottom of that it says in loving memory of Eileen May Sanders. 1934 to 2000 also. And just beside James's final resting place, we have in loving memory of Agnes, the dearly loved wife of Charles Heal, showman of Bedminster, Bed Bedminster, who fell asleep 1939, aged 60 years old. And it's a statue of a little boy. Heels, white legs, and Edward's transport. So it says showman on it. So you have the two statues there side by side. The cemetery is really, really nice and I've never been here before. Another beautiful one here of a lady looking down like she's thinking. In loving memory of my dear husband, Francis Newt Bacon, who died January the 25th, 19. 18, aged 55. And there's another name just on the other side of it there. In loving memory of Jack Wallace Bacon, beloved husband of Jess and father of Janet, Michael and Neil, who died in 1968, aged 54 years old. Some lovely old style uh, grave sites here, and they almost look like the shape of a coffin. Some of them look like a coffin there. So it's a big cemetery, 45 acres. So we will have a look around and see as much as we can. Now, this one is rather nice up here. And it almost looks like it's two flags or there's a flag involved in this scene here. Now it could be something got to do with the military. I think I see a helmet there also. In memory of Lieutenant James Anthony Gardner, 
late of HM 7th Royal Fusiliers, the beloved and only child of James Anthony and Eliza, his wife, who was accidentally drowned whilst, whilst bathing at Alway, Malabar Coast, East Indies, October the 26th, 1861, aged 30, interred in the Protestant Protestant burial ground at Cochin, October the 27th, 1861, and removed to beneath this spot by his bereaved parents in 1863. Wow. So, James Anthony here was a, uh, a lieutenant who accidentally drowned while bathing in the sea. And he was buried in 1861 in the East Indies. And in March 1863 was removed to this burial site here. So that's a beautiful monument. Rest in peace and sadly lost his life tragically. Some beautiful old Victorian style monuments here. Looks like Jeremiah, maybe, or Alsop is the name on this one. Lovely monument here. Somebody has left, um, looks like a stone here. Beautiful painted stone with all those colours on it which is nice to see a modern looking stone on such an old monument. Lydia is the name on this and unfortunately the writing has worn away on that. Lydia, wife of Henry Adam maybe. So the cemetery is really nice. It's, you know, it has that um, old style of, you know, those old um, overgrown areas and those 17, maybe 1800 headstones that would be hidden away in there, which is really nice. So just ahead there is, I believe it's a chapel in the cemetery here, and it really is a, Beautiful chapel. Almost looks like a mausoleum, but very large chapel there. Beautiful. The architecture that went into that. And there's some old grave sites and monuments around there also. So it says here I'm right, it was Anglican Chapel, this is. And isn't that just beautiful? I'll just stand back, give you a better look at it there. That is beautiful, that one there. And it looks like it's just that little bowl or for flowers there and stuff that's left inside. It's hollow inside. I don't see any names on it. Either side of it there. It's another beautiful one here. 
in memory of John William Cornish, whose remains lie in the crypt, St. George's Brandon Hill. He died the 18th of March, 1838, aged 35, also of Amelia Cornish, wife of the above, who died at Norwood, the 29th of January, 1881, aged 74. And that's a beautiful monument. Look at the top of that. Almost looks like a castle look and a style to it there at the top of it. So we'll go down. As you can see, there's always, um, there's different pathways there to go around. George Sinnott of Langton Court. Wrestlington, who died on the 13th of July, 1882, aged 61 years old. Also, Catherine Septima Sinnott, wife of the above, who died in 1933, aged 88 years old. So you have all these old graves here in a line and so the cemetery is looked after and it's the upkeep of it looks good. They have all these areas. All these areas are, um, you know, the grass is cut and it's well looked after. So you hear a helicopter above. Arnest Vale, in Bristol City. Now, there's a really nice one here. You can see a bust of this man here. And this is Thomas Tove Smart late of Southville, Bedminster, Edinburgh, who departed this life on the 26th of August, 1882, aged 68 years old. He was for a period of 42 years, a medical officer of the Bedminster Union. And in this capacity, earned a very high reputation for his professional skill and the kindness. Displayed towards his very numerous patients, he was a truly just and permanently constituous practitioner and the poor lost in him a kind and sympathizing friend, it says. Isn't that a beautiful inscription on that? So this man, Thomas Smart, was a well-known and liked person in the community. A beautiful bust of him there. So this is like a wooded area here. And it's uh, kind of hard to watch where you're going. And I'm trying to read this one here. And it's very hard to read that language. I'm not sure what that language is. Eleonora Catherine is the name on it. But if you look at the headstone there, it looks like a a dog, almost like a greyhound maybe, or something like that. Stone carved into the headstone there. It's beautiful. It's hidden away in those bushes. So we'll go up this trail and see what's here. We have another beautiful one. Look at that. In loving memory of Mabel Selina, only daughter of 
Reginald and Sarah Ann Coates, who fell asleep September the 29th, 1903, aged only 19 years old. And look at that vines wrapping itself and nature taking over around that headstone. And just like the one next door, nature has taken over here also. But you know, when you see stuff like that on headstones, nature actually at times protects those headstones in a way. Oh, we have squirrels here, guys. As I've seen in Brompton Cemetery. Seen lots of squirrels in Brompton also. I think they're more friendlier in Brompton Cemetery, London. And you can just see all those ones in there. Look at that. All hidden away under all those trees. It's a really magnificent old cemetery here, Victorian. There's that Anglican chapel just there in the distance. Beautiful tomb there. Now there is, I believe, some mausoleums here also. So I'll go and have a look for those. There we have a big anchor. Reese Thomas, beloved minister of Redland Park Congregational Church. And that big anchor on it there. There's some more graves here. And just here also, you can see them all on the hill resting there under all this beautiful branches in that tree. Isn't that gorgeous? And I use the word gorgeous a lot because, you know, it's how I feel about these places and that's what they are. These are just amazing places to visit and the serenity and serene peace that's in these old places you know and here we have memory of Anne wife of G Morris Tower Hill in his city in this city who died the 17th of June 1865 in her 32nd year also Anne Morris who departed this life 1874 aged 46 years old and there's all these beautiful ones here and you can see all the green, the green moss that comes on them. Taylor, aged 57, who died in 1865 on this one. You have all these old ones here on the hill. And it looks like they're broken. Broken away, unfortunately. Celtic crosses. This one looks like it has fallen downwards. And a headstone here has completely fallen over also, which is sad to see that there's no family members around anymore to try and maybe fix it up or even the cemetery. But I'm going to try and get in here to show you. I've spotted a beautiful, a beautiful one here. And I'll just show you where I am. So that's the path just over where the headstone is. And I've come in there to all these hidden ones. And we have an absolutely gorgeous one here. Look at that. Hilda May, beloved eldest daughter of James and May Hammonds born in 1900 and fell asleep in 1910 it looks like or sorry 1919 age 19 years old so a young girl buried here only 19 years old Hilda May and look at her grave isn't that beautiful the angel statue stone that's carved into her 
and that holly at the top. How beautiful is that, guys? And it was hidden away, and it caught my eye. I was as I am. Um, I was walking up the path or the trail there and saw it. Caught my eye, and you know, sometimes I see ones like that, and I just think to myself, I have to go and read and see who is buried there and remember these people. More beautifully angel statues. Beautiful Celtic crosses here also. In this wooded area, look at that one there, it's beautiful. Joseph Weston Stevens, JP. Born in 1861 and died in 1917. So it's kind of like Highgate Cemetery, you know, you have you have um, people walking these trails and stuff. But there's a beautiful one in there, just look at that. Anne Raggett is the name underneath. Beloved wife of David Raggett who died in 1864, aged 79 years old. And these are all probably like vaults, you know, in these areas here, really old. And there's a, a hole in this one here, guys. And I don't have a torch, unfortunately, with me, but it looks like you can see the brickwork there where it's breaking away. The ground is breaking from underneath that one there. But all this area here is covered in all these old vaults and obelisks. This one here, standing on the hill, Godwin Hugh Davis, who died in 1842. Wow, this one is absolutely stunning, guys. Look at this. Look at this monument. This monument is at least, I'd say, 20 feet tall at that. Isn't that something? Isn't that just something? And the name on this is Henry Mels Melsum. And it says up the top, the Lord is my shield and buckler. Look at that. You can just see that symbol on it there. It's like a belt. I'm sure it's military related. And I'm going to see, is there another name on the other side or some information on this? And it says, sacred to the beloved and endeared memory of Henry Melson, who died at his residence, Barton House, St. James's, in March 1866, age 53. And also in memory of Harriet, widow of the above who died in at her residence also at barton house in 1876 and it says after a painful and protracted illness born with much christian fortitude not lost but gone before wow and below that we have francis melsom who died at Kingsdown Parade, July the 28th, 1854, age 60, and was buried in the family vault, Portland Chapel, Kingsdown. Wow. So, another interesting one, just there. And that is a huge monument. That's like something you would actually see in a city, in the center square of a city or something like that. So, can you just imagine what it cost back in the day to erect 
a monument like that back in the 1800s. Wow, another one here nestled on the hillside. Look at that. And you see those faces carved into it there in the stone. There's one either side. Isn't that beautiful? And I'm just going to see, can I read some names on this? Mary Jane, wife of William, who died in 1924. All these beautiful statues. Look at that, hidden in this wooded area. All that lovely greenery all around. And those faces are either side on it there. The work that goes into these stones are absolutely out of this world, aren't they? So it's just monument after monument here. Thomas Lewis is this one. Isn't that lovely? Thomas Lewis, look at the design on that. It looks like trees, a pillar that has fallen on its side. And all these trees are, if anyone knows the name of those, please let me know. Another beautiful one here, Elizabeth. Mary is the name on it. It's hard to see a name. That huge urn. Look at that, and the veil going over each side. Stunning. Another one in there. Beautiful one. So I'm just making my way back down to kind of where I started. So just inside here, we have all the niches of all the different people interred in here. just see it goes around in a, a circle formation. Elizabeth, beloved wife of A.H. Pless, passed peacefully away 1937, age 55. So I'm not sure how far back these go, what's the oldest in them. But that'll give you an example of what they look like as you go around. And you can kind of see how it works. You have the timber there in the front part so the people's ashes will be buried behind the wall there. And I like these old green ones here. Lovely memory of her dear father and mother, Reginald Smith, March 1925. Wow. All these people's names on the walls here, and you know, these were all somebody. Somebody's son, daughter, husband, wife. All had a part to play at one stage or another. So rest in peace to all the people interred here today. So just come down to this area here and this looks like an old, old um, 
burner for cremating people here. You can see just in there, look at that, the coffin would go in there for the person to be cremated. An old style cremation area there. And this would be for coffins. You can see the wheel here. So this wheel would have lowered the coffin from above at the top of the ground there down into this area for the body be to for the body to be cremated. Wow. There's also another old beer here for carrying coffins. Beers were essential equipment in the modern crematorium of the 1930s, allowing one member of staff to move coffins easily around the site. There's another one. We've seen one in Wales, in Abergavenny. So guys, this is the Anglican chapel I was showing you earlier. And there's actually a crypt underneath. So we'll go in and have a look inside. And there's niches here. And Lucas Greening, wife of Charles Greening of Iron Acton, who died September 1856, age 53. Charles is here, died in 1858. And there's a few on this side here. Margaret Ann Ritchie, widow of Frederick Ritchie, died in 1882. Francis Harrison, 1894, Esquire. And there's a number of other Harrison mem family members there also. So in this area here behind this gate is a lot of urns. You can see different types of styles of urns there. I'll just give you a look over the gate. There's some beautiful statues there of a little girl. Another angel holding some flowers just there. And all those urns stacked up there on top of each other. And I wouldn't think there's any ashes in those urns at the moment. And I don't know the reason why they're all stacked in here. Just a beautiful little area there of it. A storage area here. You can see the old sign. Crematorium chapels, drive in and turn left. Another old beer. Natural burial woodland coffin beer. See the old wheels on it there underneath, all made of wood. And the old window there with the light coming in through all those thorns and overgrowth. Some more urns here stacked up. You see some names on them there, Florence Watkins, Dennis, Les. Albert, 1946, Alfred Gibbs, 1953 it looks like. Thomas Henry, Stevens, 1962, Basil, all different family surnames and they're all stacked up there with that old cross as well so guys that's the crypt under the anglican ch chapel in this old victorian cemetery here in bristol 
So guys, I think I'll end the video here in this old crypt. So if you like the video, give it a thumbs up, hit the notification bell and subscribe to the channel. And I'll see you all on the next cemetery adventure. Take care guys, and God bless.